Hey, I'm Santi from Pronic USA, and I'm excited to show you how our CAN Bus Multiplex Trainer version 2 works. First, double click on the trainer icon. The CAN Bus Multiplex Trainer software will open up, ready for us to explore. You'll need to select the correct COM port to connect with your board. Now, select the protocol, in this case I'll select OBD2, and then the correct speed. Click on the pause button, because the OBD2 ports send a lot of messages. Now, with the COM port selected, it's time to start the communication. Simply click on the start button to initiate the data exchange between the CAN bus multiplex trainer and your board. Once started, you'll see real-time data flowing in, which we can now monitor and analyze. Now, we're gonna send a request to retrieve the RPM in real time. For this, we'll use the request ID 0x7DF along with the PID 0x0C, which specifically requests RPM data from the vehicle. Once we send this request, the vehicle will immediately respond with the ID 0x7E8, which indicates the RPM data has been received. This data will appear in the trainer interface. As you can see, the RPM data is located in byte 4 and byte 5 of the response. The trainer software allows us to interpret these bytes as RPM values in real time, showing exactly what the engine is reporting. We've implemented a powerful tool in our trainer, the Sniffer. This tool allows us to monitor all data communication on the vehicle's CAN bus and instantly spot any changes. As data flows in, the Sniffer will keep track of all messages, helping us see what's changing in real time. Whenever a particular value changes, it's highlighted with an orange-colored cell, making it easy to identify which data points are active or fluctuating. For example, right now, I just opened the passenger door. As you can see, row number 14 with the ID 0x283 is highlighted in orange. This is because the sniffer tool detected a change in byte 1. When the door is opened, byte 1 shows the value 0x59, indicating the open status. Once I close the door, watch as byte 1 changes to 0x55, which signals the door is now closed. Here's another great use of the sniffer tool. Right now, I'm moving the steering wheel, and as you can see, the row associated with the steering wheel has the ID 0x003. When I turn the wheel, you'll notice that the data changes dynamically in bytes 1, 2, 3, and 4. These bytes continuously update as I move the steering wheel, capturing its precise position and motion in real time. As soon as I stop moving the steering wheel, the values freeze. This indicates that the wheel is no longer moving. The sniffer tool allows us to instantly detect this pause and data change, which is useful for verifying the steering system's response. Another example. We will demonstrate how the sniffer tool lets us track the door lock and unlock commands precisely. When I press the button to lock or unlock the doors, the sniffer identifies the exact ID associated with this action. In this case, row 23 with ID 0x12D we can see the data changing in bytes B2, B3, and B4 when I press the button. To get a clearer view, let's use the filter feature. I'll enter 12D as the ID in the filter tab and activate the filter. After pressing clear, only data with the ID 0x12D remains visible. Now, when I press the lock button, you'll see data changes in B2, B3, and B4. Let's refine the filter further. This time, I'll select byte B3 with the specific value 0x50 to focus on this data change. With the filter applied, I press the lock button again, and you can see that byte B4 changes from 0x00 to 0x55. This means that each time the lock command is sent, the CAN data triggers a short current to the motors, causing the doors to lock or unlock. This filtered view makes it easy to isolate exactly what's changing, giving us a clear understanding of how the locking mechanism communicates over CAN. As you can see, all the data we're capturing is structured according to the CAN bus protocol. The sniffer tool displays each message in the protocol standard format, showing the ID, data bytes, and other essential details. One of the key advantages of the sniffer tool is that it instantly detects when a new device connects to the network. Every time a new device sends data, a new row appears in the sniffer, making it easy to identify and track. In this example, I've connected a diagnostic scanner tool to the network. 
As soon as it's connected, you'll see a new entry appear in row number 47. The scanner is sending a request to the vehicle with the ID 0x7DF. In response, the vehicle sends back data using multiple IDs 0x7E8, 0x7E9, and 0x7EB. Each of these IDs represents a different response from the vehicle, typically providing various pieces of information requested by the scanner. This setup allows us to monitor the full interaction between the scanner and the vehicle. We can see what specific requests the scanner is making and how the vehicle replies, which is crucial for diagnostics. Using the sniffer, we get an inside look at every request and response flowing through the CAN network. With this tool, you can go even deeper into the data for all the ECUs, electronic control units, on the network. This means you're not limited to just monitoring. You can actually send messages to fine-tune or even hack your car. It's the perfect tool for enthusiasts and anyone passionate about learning how their vehicle performs. Whether you're a beginner or an advanced user, the CAN bus multiplex trainer opens up endless possibilities to understand, control, and experiment with your vehicle systems. This is more than just a tool. It's a gateway to learning about the world of CAN bus in an interactive, hands-on way. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to stay connected with us for more exciting tutorials and deep dives into this amazing work with CAN bus. We can't wait to share more tips and insights with you.